Oh God, it's bright and freaking cold. It's nasty out here. It is ice fishing season. Got cold the camera guy over here. And we're going out ice fishing like we've been doing a lot the last couple weeks. It's uh, it's just nasty here in uh, Nebraska. But today we're doing something that if you're new to ice fishing, and I've been getting comments on the channel and, and all the ice fishing videos that are like, I don't even understand ice fishing, which it is kind of hard to wrap your head around at first, but this will be, this will be great for you guys. Or if you already eat ice fish, this will also be great for you guys because you can go out and catch a whole bunch more fish that way. Excuse me, guys. Anyways, the, the object of the video today is we're going to take $20 and go into Shields. We're at Shields here in Omaha, Nebraska. And we're going to pick out the stuff we're going to use for the video tonight. We've got a couple hours to get out. We're going to the lake we haven't been to yet this year, but it just froze over. And uh, I think it'll be a really good chance to catch a lot of different species. And I'm going to pick the baits that I have the most luck, the most success on um, for this challenge. So we're going to pick out our baits right now. Hold the camera, guys. Just look at it. What a gentleman. Let's go find some cool. All right, just got up here to the ice fishing section. You know, if you guys watch my videos, you'll know I don't use a ton of different baits when I go out and ice fish. I use stuff that I have a lot of confidence in. I go through my rotations, and I think the good thing is we're going to be able to buy all of those things for uh, $20 or less. And we're even getting our bait, too. So uh, probably not going to do minnows. If I do wax worms, this will work with all the different types of baits we're going to use for this challenge. But yeah, we're, we're here in the ice fishing section. Let's, uh, let's pick some out. All right, boom, right here. We're starting with this guy. Probably going to be the most expensive guy um, of our challenge, but this is the jig and wrap. For whatever reason, I, I really gravitate to this color. Josh Pornstash, that is. Showed this color to me last year, and for whatever reason, clean water, muddy water, they see this bait really well. You can snap it, you can jig it. We'll show you more on the water how this guy works, but uh, bait number one, $5.99, Rapala jig and wrap. All right, we need some teardrops for sure for this challenge. And look at this shit. You can get a whole damn assortment for 10 bucks. And honestly, these guys would all work. Now they're they're all, um, these are all lead baits and they're all kind of the straight dropper. They're not gonna hang horizontal or anything. So I'll show you guys the, the ones I like a little bit better than these right here. But to be honest, these would work. Any of these guys would work if you're in a budget situation, you're just getting nice fishing. You can come to a store like this and uh, just pick up one of these guys and you'll have plenty of jigs. And honestly, you don't you don't snag or break off much ice fishing plus your porn stash. So you could, uh, you could have lots of use for a long time. Okay, just got over here. I like this. Two packs and tungsten, and they hang horizontally. As you guys can tell from the line tie, it's gonna hang almost exactly horizontal, like flat in the water column and not just straight up and down, which I think allows the fish to come in from the side, from the bottom, and just slurp it in. They really like that. Uh, the tungsten is awesome because it allows the bait to be even smaller yet weigh a lot, which when you're ice fishing, um, I use straight braid to a fluorocarbon leader almost all the time when I'm fishing these guys. But um, if you're using straight fluoro or mono, which you shouldn't be, that will actually cause kinks in your line and this bait's not even gonna pull it tight. But when you have a smaller bait, that's tungsten that's still heavier than your traditional lead or tin or whatever material brass uh, it, it lets it straighten that line out you get a lot better feel and of course tungsten is more dense and so you already are getting better more sensitive feel as well so we're going to pick up one of these two packs looks like it comes in we got some brass colors we got some silver colors we got all types of painted colors and honestly i like to keep things simple we're going to go with like nothing too crazy here but that's kind of a cool color it's got silver on the sides looks like a, a little bit of a, a red bottom on a gill or something like you'd see and since bluegills are the main forage at one of our lakes pow, pow. Cole, look at these guys cole has an impressive find here i was gonna get the regular swedish nips which i do really like the swedish pimple look at these salt bitches dollar 99 swedish nipples are freaking basically the same thing they look even shittier than these guys and they're like five bucks we're gonna go with the macho minnow i think that looks like a little perch guy cole do they have any silver or anything flashy i kind of like a flashier spoon you know I don't see anything too flashy honestly perfect thanks man <laughs> really really big of you this Lovely. works though Oh, that is flashy. What do we want? Do we want natural or do we want something like that? That guy looks tight. Purple. purple is cool. Can't go wrong with purple. Let's get two of these guys since they're only $1.99. Let's get a purple one and let's get a bright one. So we got bright guy, purple guy. I think we've spent what, $14 now? Wait, no, we haven't. We got six bucks, four forty nine, dollars so about 10 and then 14 So we still need bait. Let's go get that right now, cool sloth. We're not getting freaking those guys. We're going to do some. Definitely don't want those guys. We're going with the 250 guys. So what do we have? 14, 250, 1650. We gotta get more stuff cold. Hey, if we got two dollars left, we can ride the Ferris wheel as well. Yes, so can we please? Yes, absolutely. All right, so I changed my mind. Instead of having two spoons, I want to get all different types of baits. So we're gonna ditch one of these spoons. I'm gonna keep the top purple natural one, and then we're gonna get one of these, even though they're a little bit more expensive for 629. Let's get uh, let's get one of these ripping wraps. Uh, this is the color that we've caught them on 
in the past again another really bright one but this is going to really draw fish from a distance the smallest size of the uh the rip and wrap it's a three size which only weighs in at 1 16th of an ounce but that's actually pretty big price fishing coleslaw i think we have our 20 dollars ish uh we got what 550 these are like 10 together plus 250 plus six that's 1850 we might be like 50 cents over plus tax good enough let's go check out and catch some damn fish Probably gonna want to get this on film, Cole. It could get interesting. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I kind of figured that's how that would go. Us trying to keep from our our bait spilling all over, and it really didn't go that bad. Other than I just ate shit all over the place. All right, now let's start fishing. Cole and I just watched the clip of me eating shit down the hill. Absolutely grade A material. If you can't laugh at yourself, I don't know what the hell you're doing out doing fishing or, or making videos or putting, really, I mean, you want to put embarrassing content of yourself in front of thousands of people on the internet. That's stuff and what you want to do with your life. Anyway, I'm excited for this video because we get to learn some stuff. Um, like I was talking to Cole about a little bit ago, I'm excited for the baits we got because the majority of baits that you ice fish with fall into these four categories of baits. This one right here, which is the rip and wrap, falls into the category of like a lipless crankbait slash blade bait, we'll call it. These guys are here teardrops that come in all different shapes and sizes, but what they uh, they do have in common is they're very, very small. And generally you tip them with a little piece of live bait. All these, I'm gonna show you guys how to rig up, what rods I like to put them on, the line I like to put them on, and where I like to fish them. I like to fish them, but uh, a spoon, that's another category of baits. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but this is a nice little, it's a smaller, kind of smaller to moderate size spoon, we'll call it. And then this is the, the last category of baits that the most fall under is some type of a jigging wrap style bait. This is a an, an actual jigging wrap. It's a lead bait with a little fin on the back of it. It falls very, very fast and it, it kind of shoots up and darts forward whenever you rip up on the bait very very effective these are all mainstays but really you can do so many different types of things with these four different types of baits right here i'm going to show you guys how i like to rig them up and where i like to fish them let's go catch the fish got really fast All right, first bait we're starting with is the old teardrop. This is one that I start with pretty much anywhere that I go when I'm ice fishing. It's a very basic bait, nothing too exciting about it, but it's something that catches giant fish, tiny fish, everything in between, all species of fish will eat this little bait, even big largemouth, big catfish, big walleye. So I like to start with this. Um, and then it's also another a good thing about it is you can use it when the fish are really, really finicky, when you need to downsize and they, they won't eat the stuff they ate the day before when it's a lot more active. But I was to tip our wax worms. I put my wax worms in our little blue puck guy, which again, this would be extra money, but I would strongly recommend going out and getting one of these guys as well. Keeps your, your bait alive in the car when it's super, super cold outside. Generally, you want to fish this on a light tip rod. This one is a very light tip, light and fast, um, because you want to be able to feel super light bites. You're not fishing a very heavy bait, but again, really good to have a bait like this one that's made of tungsten and not lead because we have a heavier bait despite having a smaller size bait and smaller with ice fishing is generally better you want to downsize everything and that's what we've done with this guy so let's uh let's use this teardrop and i'll see if we can catch a fish or two we got eh, might be the dead sea right here i can't tell so a teardrop doesn't fish super effectively in very deep water anything deeper than 20 feet it takes forever for your teardrop to get down there um, again i'm using this tungsten one so that aids in that process but teardrops fish very effectively in shallower water and then of course whenever you you got a lot of fish in the screen a lot of different species in the lake and you're just out trying to get bites a teardrop is super super good or a day like today when it's eight degrees out here right now slick calm no no uh, clouds in the sky sun's out high pressure type day downsizing into a teardrop can get bit hopefully we can make that happen look what i did when i fell down the hill got blood everywhere cole come stitch me up what depth are you there marking anything oh there we go i got one on my teardrop already hole number two. Oh, just barely grabbing it he's got to be a freaking micro guy yeah, these are definitely a little bluegill, I think. There we go. Freaking clobbered it. Oh, hell yeah, look at that. That's a nice gill. Can't go wrong with that. Let's get him in the sunlight. That's a pretty one, Cole. Nice little nine inch or so gill on the little teardrop guy. I thought he was little at first. I should have known that he wasn't extra tiny because he didn't freaking get away. Just give it a little pecker dick. 
he instead sized it up for six hours first. Damn, that's pretty impressive. Better gill than we, uh, we've we been catching around here. I'm all in. So we're fishing in 12 feet. Again, that is the, uh, that's the effectiveness of this little teardrop. Anything shallower than 20 feet of water catches all sizes of fish. Hopefully we can get a bass or a, a uh, there's even walleye in here. Maybe we get a walleye to go to. Also really good for crappie. And shit, I've caught everything. Honestly, some of the bigger catfish I've caught have been on a little teardrop waxy like this. Ah, uh, another guy. It's just a guy down here, Cole, don't worry about it. This dude is a lot more aggressive, which usually means smaller. Yeah, definitely a little peck. So it's 100% of bluegill. Just don't know if it's big or small. That last one gave me a little peck too. I thought he was a little baby dick guy too. Not so much. Could have eaten his ass. Cole, I just said baby dick and eating ass in the same sentence. Wow, this guy ripped off my cricket. We need a new cricket. So I'm also fishing this this bait on a, on straight fluorocarbon. Generally, I like either straight fluoro or a a braid like a super line to fluoro leader. But this is three pound or a three pound fluoro, so some of the lightest line that I will use. Definitely lighter than anything I'll use open water. But you definitely want a light line with this little bait. It's a really finesse type bait. So I see several marks down there. I want to see if these fish will come up and chase this bait. Generally, you want to slowly lower that bait to the highest mark. The higher marks are usually the ones that are more active. And then a lot of people, you, you'll hear them talk about raising the fish. And that's generally when the fish are right there, the mark is right where your bait is. If you just lift your bait up, usually motionless, the more aggressive fish will follow the bait up and suck it in. It's kind of like a just a mechanism that they get used to, that they're, they're used to seeing the bait or whatever swim up and away from them, I think. And it makes them pretty angry a lot of times. There we go. Yep, that's about what I figured. So the plus, like I said, of using a teardrop is you get a lot of bites, but the downfall is you get a lot of bites from small fish, like this little bluegill. So I think we're going to back out, fish this hole a little bit more because there is a whole school of fish down there, but they're probably all little bluegill. I'm going to fish this bait down below them. Maybe there's a bigger fish down in the bottom area of the water column. But if that doesn't work, we're going to switch up baits and maybe switch locations to hopefully find some better quality fish, whether that be bass or walleye or big crappie. Is that on the, uh, oh God, big bluegill. That's on the little teardrop guy. Yep, I had to switch. I was throwing that jig and wrap. Everything was backing away from me, so I had to downsize to the teardrop. Cold Slaw was fishing the, the jigging wrap that we got, but yeah, he's got the other teardrop and uh, got freaking choked. Let me see that bluegill, homie. That's a, a, a nice Jillian, Cole. Wow. That is a nice Jillian. Great job. Thanks. Great job. All right, we just switched spots to uh, a different side of the lake. It's kind of like a ditch we're fishing now. We're going to fish the, the sides, though. We're going to fish dead in the center. I know from fishing on my boat, there's like one brush pile in this area, one or two. So if we found it, there's probably a uh, good fish. So worst case scenario, we found a nice brush pile. Best case scenario, there's a school of fish right there. But I'm switching up to uh, old Mr. Spoon right here. I like to fish a spoon in these situations because I'm hoping these are better quality fish. We're going to tip it once again with that little waxworm guy. But um, a spoon's better in deeper water. It gets down quicker, more efficiently. And again, I've been pretty shocked, even this year, as I fish a Swedish nipple a whole lot, but I've been shocked by how many fish of all different sizes will eat this thing. It's one that uh, if the fish aren't super aggressive or they're all very small, you're not gonna be able to catch them. I have caught little tiny bluegill and stuff on it, but generally for better quality fish, if they are uh, they are bigger fish, it's a bigger meal, bigger presentation, obviously, so you can catch some bigs doing it. Oh God. See guys, this is why you use a teardrop and a waxy because you can catch gigantors. Man, the bite is fire tonight. Long arm this guy. Yeah, dude, look at that fucking crappie. It's a 19 incher. Shit. Oh, never mind. Good job, Cole. I'm gonna take up fucking bowling or something, I think. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I found the school, man. This is a fire spot. Look at that craps we just moved back to where we started we've walked 26 miles definitely has not been the type of day i've wanted but drop down we got crappie here now which is kind of interesting because this school in this area was bluegill before there's a million more of them all right since we got 87 little tiny guys down there probably i'm not sure i don't got the camera down there or anything they were just following the wax from all over the place. So I'm gonna drop the spoon down there. That's always a good bait to, to upsize and try to get a little bit better quality bite. And when I'm fishing a spoon, I, this is the rod reel combo I, I like for it. I'm fishing 
fire line to a, a fluorocarbon leader. I think it's like five or six pound fire line, which is super strong, to a four pound fluorocarbon leader. And I fish it on a little bit beefier rod. So it's, I think this is a 25 inch medium light. So a step up from the ultra light that I fished the little teardrop on and a little bit longer rod as well. This one's actually a little bit slower taper. It's not a super, super fast tip rod. I call it more like a moderate fast tip, which is really important for those treble hook baits. That way they can't, uh, can't shake it quite as easy, but I'm gonna kind of jig around with the spoon, which I like to, I, I jig it pretty aggressively, two or three inch pops. And a fish just came in and crushed it actually when I did that, he liked it a lot. Might just be a little crappie. But then when I get it in a fish's face and they're kind of being finicky, I'll just kind of barely shake it, shake the slack in your line. God, he's looking at it. But that's generally what I do. Try to pull him up a little bit. A little bit more, especially if you don't have any fish in the screen, more aggressive to, to draw them in. But then once they get up close to it, you'll see me just kind of shake it in place. Probably looks like nothing on the screen, honestly. Okay, time to give the jig and wrap a try. They don't want to touch the damn spoon. Sometimes, for whatever reason, they'll just eat the jig and wrap a little bit better, a little more aggressive bait. More movement front to back than up and down and fluttering like a spoon. This actually, if you give it little pops, and that's how I like to fish it, short little two or three inch rips and it'll shoot that bait forward and it falls super quick because it's straight up lead the whole bait besides that little plastic tail section and i fish it on the exact same setup that i fished that spoon on man i hope we can make one eat this coal coal wow good job man might be the biggest crappie i've never caught that's a giant dude He's thick, he's long, he's everything you really could ask for. Did you go over that hole where I was, damn it Cole, I said we gotta stay out of that hole because it's all baby craps. You proved me right, doesn't happen very much. I mean, it's tough out here, man. I might say we're gonna publish this video, I think no matter what, so people can learn some stuff, give them some value, but it's been a giant disappointment. I thought we really could come to this lake and catch them on a variety of different baits, but so far it's just been one of those tough bluebird days where the only bait we're getting bit on is that teardrop so i guess there is something to be learned out of it is that one i don't know how to catch fish through the ice and that two use a teardrop if it sucks balls oh no cole's got something giant now a bit actually that's not a bad one cole wow damn like the ones we at the beginning of the day. it is i'm going back to the damn teardrop after that nonsense some teardrops are us only Ugh, so much better hey cole don't eat this snow over here in this spot I know you're eating some early. Hey, look, a bucket. Some jackass in this spot left a damn bucket. Let's see, we got a green Menards bucket. Should I open it, Cole? If this video gets 20,000 thumbs ups, I'll open it and show what's in here in the next video. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Oh God, we got a smorgasbord of shit in here. If I could open it. There we go, good. good. Look at this shit we got. Oh, gross. Catfishing dip bait, Primo. Dude, this might be Josh's. Think, think Josh left this out here? Oh, this is an ice fishing reel if I ever saw one. The King Cat Dose. Dude, they got all sorts of catfishing stuff in here. We should give this to Josh as a present tomorrow. For fishing with porn stash tomorrow, maybe, I think. And I think I'm gonna give this to him. Mostly because I'm gonna put the lid back on. He's not gonna be able to take it off. But we got some Cigar and Vizex in there. Some sponge shit for stink bait. That's unused. Oh, this stink bait's actually got stuff in there. Hog wild, original. Got some 14 pound trialene, 25 pound Omniflex, the $2 spool. One bottom bouncer, just kidding. Two bottom bouncers, 12 pound C, I'd take that, but there's hardly anything left on that spool. That's actually a good find. And then, most importantly, a 2016 Nebraska fishing guide. Beautiful. Yep, this is going with this. You know what? Person that left this, you're a total dickhead for leaving a whole bucket on the lake. But thank you, because now we got something to give porn stash for a present. And the lid's totally on, so he will never get it off. I give up. Fucking hands frozen. Well, ended up being a total poop shit bite out here today. Nebraska fishing really showed out for uh, for what it's known for. We've been lucky. We've kind of had some good luck so far this year through the ice. But today they uh, they just it's what it usually is: little bluegill, little tiny crappie, and a whole lot of disappointment. But we did have two good things happen today. The highlights of the video were one when I went tumbling down the hill on the way in, trying to stop the sled, slow the sled down, or maybe I just fell down because I'm uncoordinated. I don't really know, but that was pretty good. Got a nice little blood all over my stuff to show for it. And two, we got this bucket. 
I mean, we got a whole whole batch of catfishing contraptions that we can give to Porn Stash when we go fishing tomorrow. So you guys will have to tune in and see how much Porn Stash loves us for giving us these wonderful, late, but good Christmas gifts to him. I don't know, if you guys learned something in this video, that's awesome. I, I seriously was trying to give you guys the best gifts I could, even though the bite sucked balls. Um, if you want to go give this, this video a, a thumbs down, a, a little dislike, I totally understand. Feel free to go ahead and do that. Do it all you want, actually. That'd be great. But uh, tomorrow, I, I can almost promise you guys that it's not going to be as disappointing. We've got some better ideas, at least more fun ideas, and we're going to a better damn spot. Might never come back here again. I don't really know. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this one. I'm after. Sometimes we catch them, sometimes we don't. Today, we, we, we at least found stuff and got injured. I'm out of here.